evening, everyone. It's so good to see each and every one of you here tonight. Looking forward to what God has in store for us tonight. We go ahead and get into the singing time. We look forward to these Wednesday nights. Thank you so much. If you're joining us by way of the internet, thank you so much. Good to see our church family, a few visitors as well. So thankful. And uh, thank really good to see Brother Tricky Ricky back there. Praise God. Glad to have him back. He's a, he's a, fish, a visitor a member, praise God. But uh, he's off serving the Lord. Been talking to him. Brother brother Ricky, how many have you had saved that you're talking? Wow, 32, 16. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Isn't it good to know that God is still saving old sinners? Amen? Thank God. I'll Speaking of that, I'm glad the day that I got saved. When I was a six-year-old little boy, I uh, asked Jesus Christ into my heart, and now I'm able to serve him and love him, uh, and thank God that he has. But page number 269 is what we're going to sing this evening, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. Let's all stand, sing this good song, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart, and we'll have a good time this evening. Amen. Go ahead. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought Since Jesus came into my heart I have lied in my soul one song I had sought Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Floods of joy o'er my soul like to see billows roll since Jesus came into my heart. I have ceased from my wanderings and going astray since Jesus came into my heart. And my sins, which were many, are all washed away since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul like to see billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart, I'm possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure. Since Jesus came into my heart And no dark clouds of doubt Now my pathway obscure Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Floods of joy o'er my soul Like the sea billows roll since Jesus came into my heart I shall go there to dwell In that city I know Since Jesus came into my heart And I'm happy, so happy As onward I go Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul like to see billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart. Amen. Praise God. Y'all did some good singing. Go ahead, be seated. We'll go ahead and pray. We'll make a few announcements. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this time, God, that we've gathered around at your house. Lord, I thank you for what we felt this morning in our morning service. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to be here once again in this evening service. God, I pray that you just touch, have your will and your way. God, I pray that the singing, God, would be a blessing, that you touch, your touch would be upon those that are singing. God, I pray that you'd be uh, with Brother John this evening, God, as he comes and presents the word. Uh, God, I pray you just help, God. I pray that as we preach the word of God, Lord, that we would make much of you, God. I pray that those that are watching, God, would be blessed. Those that are here, Lord, bless them, God. I pray that you touch, God, a special touch on our service tonight, Lord. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. 
Thank you so much once again for being here. So thankful that you are here. And if you are a guest, we thank you so much. You do have an opportunity. We'd love for you to fill out one of those visitor cards. It is a blessing for us to be able to get in contact with you, let you know more about. We don't uh, uh, bombard you with a lot of things, but we just want you to know what we have and offer here at our church at Harvest Baptist Tabernacle. And it is a true blessing and an honor that you came to be a part of our service. And you go ahead and fill one of those out if you can and see us at the end of service. But as far as our announcements, make sure you know summer saturation. Now we're going down to the wire, but Brother Joseph has assured us that we're going to get to 5,000 doors if we continue in the way that we have been going. And I thank each and every one of you that have come out and been a part of that. Uh, I tell you, there, there are times where we just really enjoy uh, the good time there to be able to fellowship and tell people about Jesus Christ and be able to invite them to the church. And then there's times where folks, Brother Steve, have looked at me and said, You look hot. And I'm not going to lie, it's hot. As a matter of fact, I made a suggestion, Brother Joseph, I said, next year, if we do this again, you do run in, run in this summer saturation once again, I vote that we get towels for us that are out there to be able to, so go ahead, and, he, and I said, go ahead, put our logo on it and everything. You know, some of you that are not right with God, y'all can use it as a golf towel, praise God. It's it's uh, up to y'all, whatever y'all want to do. But, uh, but no, I'm joking. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. I, everybody is, has their problems. But I'm thankful. <laughs> thankful. <laughs> Sister Beverly cracked me up right there. Uh, I'm thankful that every, every one of y'all have helped us out in such of that way. It's been a true blessing. Then on our Sunday mornings, uh, 1045, right over there in the Oasis, the Fellowship Hall, make sure right after that Sunday school class, Brother Poole's class is done. They do have a time of immense prayer. Make sure that you come out, be a part of that. Then also, we are truly excited that Harvest Baptist uh, Bible School is uh, starting back up. Those are going to be finishing up the book of Daniel. Then they're going to be going right into an awesome study on the book of Revelation. So uh, that is the kind of the twin books that you have. If you uh, understand and see what Daniel is talking about, then Revelation will come right along with that. So make sure if you'd like to be a part of that, that uh, you would, uh, we'd love for you to be a part of that. Brother Harper would love for you to be a part of that. Make sure that you avail yourself to that Bible school as well. We can work it in many different ways. You can take it for credit, but then also if you just want to learn more about the Word of God, study deeper, deeper, that's exactly what we're here for. And so excited about that. The books that they'll be using are available in our bookstore. So uh, we're looking forward to that as well. And then Youth for Truth. If you have anybody that's in the Youth for Truth, Saturday afternoon, uh, they're going down to the Venture of Faith camp with Dr. Lentz, uh, Greg Lentz, one more time, and uh, looking forward to that. They're going to be leaving at 9.30 in the morning. So if you have them here at 9.30, Brother Tom has been released from his doctor to be with those young people all day. Praise God. And uh, we're so thankful that God has touched him and uh, he's able so at 9 30 they're going to be leaving they're going to have a choir it's going to be an all-day thing pretty much to be able to go down there enjoy that good time of fellowship and service but I'm looking forward to what God is doing there with those young people so uh, make sure then also when we get done in this evening service you also have the opportunity to be able to give in your tithes and offering of course we can always give by way of the internet through our website you can text to give as well they're on our uh, the number there is available for you so if you'd like to do any of those to be able to do that or the plates are back in the back and we'll uh, thank you for your faithfulness in your tithes and your offering looking forward to what brother john has for us brother john you come on ahead and uh, so excited about him he is a missionary that's on his travels going through and he's going to tell more about that so excited he has a table out there make sure that you go by be a part of that brother john you just go ahead you present the word god bless you brother appreciate you god bless you thank you brother thank you so much it's a joy for me and for my family now to be here back after 12 years, can you believe that? After 12 years, my wife and I, we came here for the first time in 2010. We were just one year marriage and on the patient. And now we came with two kids. <laughs> Next time we will be coming with our, with our grandkids. <laughs> so they are there. Uh, John Luke is our youngest son and also uh, my wife, Silvana, and 
and a Julia. So God has been so good to us. And church, I want to thank you. We, we came here uh, for the Rock of Ages conference. It has been, we, we are 20 years on the mission field in Brazil, and we are 20 years with the Rock of Ages preaching, preaching the gospel there in Brazil. And also this church, this dear church, has been supporting us uh, in about 12 years, and we, we are really thankful uh, for what you have been doing uh, through uh, you uh, there in Brazil for us to be able to reach souls there, uh, preach the gospel there. You will see the video presentation, what the Lord has been doing there in Brazil through you. You are part, you are with us there in Brazil, and I want to thank you so much for uh, your financial support and also your prayers. I will, I will, just for you to have an idea, I will say one verse of the scripture in Portuguese just for you to to have an idea how is John 3.16 in Portuguese. Porque Deus amou o mundo de tal maneira que deu seu Filho unigênito para que todo aquele que nele crê não pereça, mas tenha a vida eterna. John 3.16. That's the message that we preach there in Brazil and that's the message that we preach around the world and it works here also uh, in the United States and we, uh, also we preach here where we can have opportunity to try to share the gospel to the people. But you will see the video uh, presentation, what the Lord has been doing during these 20 years. Uh, inmates, ex-inmates, prisoners get out from prison. Um, they are serving the Lord outside of prison. Some of them, they are deacons in the church. Some of them, they are evangelists on the road in Brazil. Some of them, they are pastoring churches. So, Praise the Lord. The Lord has changed the lives in the, in the inmate heart. We, don't, we just don't see them raising their hand. Praise the Lord, I got saved. No, we can see their life changed also. And going back to the society, and a life changed. So that we really praise the Lord. And soon, very soon, brethren, we will be in heaven. All together, no bearing in the language, culture, will be worshiping the Lord forever and ever. And you see a lot of souls that have been saved through this church and through your prayers and also your financial support. You'll see the video. Thank you so much again. Brazil is the largest country in both South America and the Latin American region. And it is the largest Portuguese speaking country in the world. The Brazilian people are a mixture of three cultures, Portuguese, African, and Native American. As with any other country in the world, Brazil is a melting pot of different religions. In fact, due to the diversity of its cultures and its heritage, this country boasts an array of religious ideals and affiliations. 90% of the Brazilian population subscribe to some religious idea. Around three-fourths of the population claim to be Roman Catholics. In fact, there are more Catholics in Brazil than in any other country in the world. You will find not only Catholics, Methodist, Episcopal, Pentecostal, Lutheran, and Baptist in Brazil. In Brazil, there are more than 700 inmates behind the bars. They are lost, and they are waiting to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Through the years, we have a partnership with the state governor and also the federal government to have access in every prison in Brazil. By God's grace, many souls have trusted Jesus Christ as the result of the preaching of the gospel in many prisons across the nation. I remember very well one time visiting one of the largest prisons in the South America, in Sao Paulo City. During that prison visitation, I remember when I got in the cell and I saw a man came into me and said, John, I have tried several things to change my life, 
but I couldn't. I tried different religions. I tried to kill myself, but I could not get any change in my life. And I remember looking at his eyes and I told him, have you tried Jesus Christ? Have you tried Christ into your heart? And I opened my Bible and I told him about the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. That man bowed his knees and cried out and asked Jesus Christ to be his Savior. Jesus Christ came up his sin. With tears in his eyes, that man was changed by the power of the gospel of our Jesus Christ. That's the reason we get in the prisons. We go there to give the inmates hope, to give the inmates the opportunity to have their hearts changed by the power of the Word of God. The Rock of Ages Ministries in Brazil, as a team of a missionary in board of pastors, we try to reach souls around our country. Our, our burden and our mission is to fulfill the great commission of our Lord Jesus Christ. Evangelism is our goal, and we go to different areas in our country as prisons, villages, different areas in the cities, schools, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We go around to give out gospel tracts, Bibles, and discipleship program, just try to fulfill the great commission of Jesus Christ. We also now have the Prisoner Bible Institute. This is when the inmate is saved in the prison and now has the opportunity to study the Word of God and grow in the Lord Jesus. Hello, my brothers. This is Chaplain Reinaldo, work with Brother John and the older missionary, sharing the gospel of that we call PBI. PBI, we provide the knowledge of the Jesus Christ to the inmates, and also we provide the meaning of life. God has been doing so great things here in Brazil. A lot of souls has been saved. So many lives has been changed by the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Thank you once again and may God richly bless you and yours. We also have a ministry in the ladies prison. The ladies prison ministry has been established since 2002. And since 2002 we have been preaching the gospel in different ladies' prison around the country. Many ladies have been giving their life to Jesus Christ. We have a group of ladies from local churches that visited prisons around the country to preach the gospel and to witness to the ladies behind the bars. Through the local church, we go to different places around the nation to preach the gospel in jails, cities, prisons, and schools. That's our goal, to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in everywhere we see a person lost. We provide also to the volunteers that join with us special trainings to equip them to get in the prisons, knowing what they will expect there. Not only we encourage them to be full of the Holy Spirit, that's what we depend on to go. But also we try to train them, to make them to understand the rules behind the prisons and behind the jails. Even during the pandemic time that we were living and we are still living, we could not stop. We are moving forward for God's glory. By God's grace, all missionaries and volunteers from Rock of Ages Ministries in Brazil, they are preaching the gospel and also in the public schools that our burden is to let the people know what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. We understand that the heart beating of Jesus Christ is mission and evangelism. And we understand also that our heart beating must be 
evangelists and souls. That's because we as a ministry and we as missionaries of Rock of Ages Ministries here in Brazil, we try to reach every soul. We conduct around the country evangelism campaign to reach souls, giving people Bibles, gospel tracts, and witness, and give the people opportunity to hear the gospel in different states of the country. Pray that the Lord might raise up new missionaries, new volunteers. Pray, please, that the Lord might change souls every time we go to places here in Brazil. My he, my he will use our lives for his honor and his glory. Thank you so much for your prayers. Thank you so much for your support that we don't take for granted. Lord bless you. to Chicago. Is that correct? Heading up to Chicago, so they definitely need their prayers for safety as they travel, but we're so thankful that God is still continuing to use these families to be able to touch uh, places where we're not able to, but thank God that we're able, as our pastor says, to clip coupons off of that to be able to the ministries that they're going on. We want the, the Lord to be able to continue to work through no matter what's happening here at our church, whether the lights are off or, or where the lights are on, we want to continue the ministry of Harvest of Baptist Tabernacle all over this world. And we're so thankful that we have an opportunity. Before we get into preaching, uh, and make sure you go by their table this evening, Brother John Alvin. Thank you so much for being here, Brother. Thank you so much, your whole family. Make sure you go by their table. Before we get into preaching time this evening, we've asked Miss Charity. She's going to go ahead and sing for us this evening. I know she will absolutely be a blessing to you. You go ahead. You make her welcome this evening.
How many of you can say amen to that? I'm so thankful, so thankful with all my heart that God has been faithful uh, every step of the way in my life. And I can say uh, without a shadow of a doubt that he will continue to be faithful as well. Book of Isaiah chapter number 41 this evening. Book of Isaiah chapter number 41 and we can continue on. And what a theme because we can even say that that song goes perfectly and right along with what God has in store for us tonight in his word because God continues to tell us I'm faithful I'm faithful I'm here for you I am for you praise God I'm excited to know that God is in control we've been talking about Philippians in the in the morning service and uh, going through that study and we had a good time this morning and in that study we find that Paul could simply say God is in control God is on the throne and as if he is on the throne and he is in control and he's working everything out for our good. For those of us that love and trust and have accepted Christ as our Savior. In Isaiah chapter number 41, we begin to look through the word of God here and uh, see a, a few things. In the book of uh, Isaiah chapter number 41, look with me in verse number 1. Keep silence before me, O islands, and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near, then let them speak. Let us come near together to judgment. Who raised up the righteous man from the east, called him to his foot, gave the nations before him, and made him to rule over kings. He gave them as the dust to his sword, and as driven stubble to his bow. He pursued them and passed safely even by the way that he had not gone with his feet. But I want you to look with me this evening in verse number 4. Look at the question that is posed in the word of God that God gives to us. Who hath wrought? Who hath done it? Calling the generations from the beginning. And I thank God I love those passages in the Bible where God asks a question. But not only does he ask a question, but he gives us the answer in that same very verse. As a matter of fact, in the New Testament, one of the greatest illustrations of that, Brother Richard, is simply this. What is your life? James chapter number 4, verse number 14. What is your life? It is but a vapor. And here he's saying this, simply this. Who hath wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? And he answers and he says, I, the Lord, the first and with the last, I am he. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this scripture. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be here once again in your house and with your people. And Lord, I beg you right now, God, that you would just have your will in your way. No matter what happens, God, I pray you'd bind back the demons of, his he of the hell that they might not be able to interfere with anything that is happening during this service tonight. God, we thank you for what we felt already. God, we thank you for your faithfulness. <laughs> we thank you for your mercy. We thank you that your mercy is renewed day by day by day. And God, your grace is sufficient for each and every one of us. Lord, we thank you for that. And God, I pray as we open your word, God, that you would uh, and, uh, open our eyes. Lord, that we might behold wondrous things from thy law. To be able to see what you would have us to see. God, I pray you'd be with me, God, this evening. Touch me, God, and hide me behind the cross. And fill me with the Holy Spirit of God. Lord, guard my mouth and my mind, God, this evening. Lord, we love you. We praise you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. As I begin through looking through this in Isaiah chapter number 41, I begin to look a little bit background because in Isaiah chapter number 40, it's actually a, a precursor to chapter number 41. It's actually as we begin to look at that, we look at a setting that takes place. The setting is this, that there is a continuation from the chapter number 41. Probably one of the most well-known verses in all of the Bible is found in the very last verse of chapter number 40. It simply says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. 
So many people know that verse. But then we continue on to go in. And during the setting, this is a time in which Israel is in captivity. But there are good tidings that are coming. If you will, if you can, so go ahead and take your Bible, chapter number 40. Turn back to verse number 9 with me. Look at verse number 9, That because there are good tidings that are happening. The Israelites are in uh, captivity. They have been told so many years ago that they would be in captivity. But that captivity is coming and nearing and end as we look in Isaiah chapter number 40. Verse number, one, uh, uh, verse number 9 says this, O Zion that bringeth, bringeth good tidings, get thee up into high mountain, O Jerusalem, that bringeth good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength, lift it up, be not afraid, say unto the cities of Judah, look at this, behold your God. What better tidings could we possibly think about? What better tidings could we look at than when we look upon the glorious face of our Lord Jesus Christ? What better can we look at as God continues to uh, help us along and move us along and go through and the setting is, uh, seems to be very dismal, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Things, better things are coming that is going to go into the end. They have looked around and their country, their city, their temple has been ravished. It's been laid waste. There's nothing that seems to be left to it. But yet there's a glimmer of hope. Now so many times we look through the prophets and we see how there's terrible things and terrible things and they're, they're simply saying, thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord and they have warned the people of God and they have continued to tell them but then there was a point in which in the first verse of chapter number 1 in the book of Daniel and it shall come to pass. When God says something, it's going to happen. So as we begin to look through and see this, that it was going to happen, but thank God we saw a greater thing uh, could take place, that glimmer of hope, that little bit of spark of hope. In chapter number 40, verse number 9, Behold your God. There's somebody greater that's coming. God has set up kings before. God has brought down kings before. God has done that in the past. God will do that in the future if he tarries his coming. But I'm so thankful that I know that God is in control. The setting there is there. But then there's a statement that happens in verses number 2 and 3. We won't, for the sake of time, begin to look through those verses or read those verses again. But he is simply saying this. Put your confidence in God. Don't put confidence in your armies because they're dismal. Don't put confidence in your armies because they, they have been defeated. There's nothing left of them. Don't put hope in your uh, governmental officials because there's nothing left of them. Don't put hope in uh, the systems of this world because there's nothing that's going to take place. But if I, God says, glory to God, if I step in, if I begin to move, if I begin to raise someone up, then something is about to happen. And I'm glad Brother James is that glimmer of hope is just that. That God steps on the scene and he begins to tell the people of Israel I have had you in captivity for these years but look up child of God, look up people of Israel, there's a better day that's coming. And I can simply say this that we may be in trouble in troubles times, we may be in tribulational times, but uh, times that are uh, all kinds of issues in our life, but I thank God that there is a better day coming with the Lord Jesus Christ. As we begin to look through that statement that is said, that's a sweet consolation to the people of God from the prophet of God saying uh, by the message of brought from God. He's simply saying that, that I want you to know that God is moving. God has something. There is a deliverer that is coming ahead. Brighter days are ahead. The people of Israel have seen this before. Years and years and years ago, God has raised up people in the past to be able to do that. Probably the most well-known is simply Moses, the man that was raised up to bring them up, up out of captivity. They brought Moses up and was able to deliver the people of God. He also brought up Joshua, and, and he was able to lead the people of God into the uh, promised land. But then uh, Israel falls into this cycle. You know, you love that cycle. You begin to look through in the book of Judges how they sin. And then God puts them into captivity or have trials and tribulations. And then they begin to repent or not true repentance, but they just feel, feel sorry, feel sad that they got caught. If y'all ever, y'all ever, there, there's a difference in, in, in repenting and sorry you got caught. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that in there. 
But then they, they go back and then God brings a deliverer to them. And then people like the names of Othniel, Ehud, Shamgar. Those are the people in the books of Judges that God has brought people up. Gideon comes in. Uh, Deborah and Barak begins to come in. Gideon there. Samson comes in. Samuel comes in beginning to lead the people of God. But then they go by the way. But God has done it before. God has done it and been able to help them before. And God will be able to do it again. You say, well, then how is it possible, Brother Shane, that we possibly do that? Well, if you look through chapter number uh, 41, verse number 2 and 3, there's several different thought processes of who this person is, and we won't go into that debate, but ultimately I know without a shadow of a doubt that my Lord and my Savior, He's the one that will deliver us out of this whole world. He's the one that will continue on to be able to help us up, and I thank God that I am he is what God was saying. I'm the one that has brought you up. I'm the one that has brought you out of captivity. I'm the one that has delivered you. And he is still the one that's going to do that. But in verse number 4, we look real close and we begin to see that. That there is a, the, the poses that question. And God begins to, by the word of the prophet to his people, assures them that there is support that is on the way. God has not left them by the wayside. God has not forgotten them. God, I will say this, God has not forgotten you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God has not forgotten you in your turmoil. God has not forgotten you in your issues or problems of life. God is for you. God is with you. God will deliver you. And God is on your side. I began to do some research of a, a, a few uh, years ago and I found out that this uh, very important artist was uh, commissioned to do a painting and he said I want to do the painting of uh, the king of Germany but I want all his generals to be all around him and I want to make sure so he said I want the most important person I'm going to save the best for last so this uh, artist goes through and he gets time and Brother James, he goes through and he paints one of the generals and the other general and the other general and the other general and before he was able to finish and complete this painting that he had been commissioned, he dies. In the very center of that, in the very center of that painting, there's a big empty spot. The generals are there. They're all peering up and supposed to be looking adoringly at the king. But there's no king there. But Brother James, I have found the king. <laughs> I have found the leader. I have found the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. I have found the one that is going there. There's an interesting phrase that the Bible uses in, in, in the New Testament several times and even in the Old Testament. But I'm so thankful to be able to look through the Word of God. And, and this phrase is used in our text verse, verse number 4. He simply goes through and he begins to, to look through and he says, Who hath wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, praise God for that. The first, praise God for that. And with the last. And then he simply adds at the end of that verse, I am he. So that interesting phrase is simply that God says, I am. The first time that he says it, he says it to Moses out of the burning bush. In Exodus chapter number 3, verse number 14, he simply says that I am. Glory to God. What does that mean? I exist. That means I don't have to worry about you or anybody else for me to be able to exist. I am self-existent. I am the Almighty. I am the Alpha, the Omega. I am the one that can make everything in this world and have made everything in this world. And then that, uh, that is in a constant state as we look into the book of uh, the people of Hebrew in that Hebrew language. And it gives the idea that God is no matter what. Isn't that a blessing to know? That God is there no matter what. God is with us no matter what. God revealed himself to Moses as the I am. And he spoke to the prophets proclaiming the great I am. But then in the New Testament something interesting begins to happen. That somebody comes on the scene and he begins to proclaim himself as the great I am. In the book of John, he has seven different times where he says, I am, I am, I am. And we've gone through and looked through those wonderful phrases as God began to look at. And in John chapter number 8, verse number 58, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Woo, glory. That means he's self-existent. 
That means it's no matter what. But our passage in Isaiah chapter number 41, verse number 4, adds a word. I am he. You say, well, what's the big deal about he? Because I am says that I'm the self-existent, I'm the self-existent, I am the uh, Alpha Omega, I am the omniscient one, I am the omnipresent one, I am the one that knows all and cares all and, and gives all. I, I am, it doesn't matter, I can't go any better than I am. But yet he adds, I am he. And when you begin to look at that word, it actually means to translate, registers, or uh, uh, rendered the same. I'm not explaining it right, but boy, it blessed my soul. In other words, God's saying, I am, I'm the self-existent, I am the one that uh, is, and then the word he says, I'm the same one as him. There's, there's none other than me. I'm the one that uh, no one else can to do anything about. I'm the one that there is that's standing before uh, 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 all the worlds and have created all the things. And I begin to thank God that how he said that I am he. And then I begin to go and look through the word of God and say, boy, it's so important that God would say I am he in the Old Testament. I wonder if Jesus might have said the same phrase. So I began to look up the phrase, I am he, and look for verses that said the phrase, I am he. And guess what? I found some. I found some, and I love this. The part that I love is the letters that are found there, they're in red. You know what that means? Glory to God. I, I love Brother Jimmy. Brother Jimmy, uh, Corey, he, he blesses my soul. And he, he's got them on tonight. Glory to God. He's got his red tennis shoes on. You know what red stands for? And if you ask Brother Jimmy after service, he's going to tell you. Glory to God. He says, you know what? I love these shoes, Brother Shane. You know why? I said, why, Brother Jimmy? He said, they're red. I said, that's great. I like red. He said, no, red is even better than great. He said, that's the blood of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We'll shout her out. Glory in the, in the vestibule up there. Boy, that's amazing to me that the words that are found in red, he's saying that I am he. So we'll do a little Bible study tonight, if you don't mind. Turn with me to the book of John, chapter number 8, verse number 28. In the book of John, chapter number 8, verse number 28. The Bible simply says this. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then ye shall know that, there it is, I am He. The same. The same one. And that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father had taught me, I speak these things. So I can tell you this, that I believe with all of my heart in the deity of Jesus Christ. I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God. I believe with all my heart that there is an incarnate flesh of God, that Jesus Christ was the one. It says, Emmanuel, God with us. And there's many people, Brother Earl, that try to push that down and say that that's a, he was just a man, or he was just this, or he was just that. I'm simply going to tell you that Jesus is. God he's saying that in John chapter number 8 verse number 28 I can simply say brother Jose that he is the Messiah he's the first he's the last he's the Alpha he's the Omega he's Elohim he is uh, Yahweh he is Jehovah he is El Shaddai God Almighty he is Adonai the Lord he is El Gabor the mighty God he is God he is Jesus Christ Redeemer of the world <laughs> hallelujah that he is the redeemer. You say, well, what am I? I am he. He says, I am the redeemer. I'm the one that has ransomed the people of this world. In Mark chapter number 10, verse number 45, for even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. You say, well, what does that word ransom really mean, Brother Shane? It's the act of freeing from captivity or punishment. I am so glad that, glory to God, Brother Jeffrey, one day Jesus Christ reached down. He saw me in my condition. He knew exactly where I was headed, and I was on my way to hell. But as a six-year-old little boy, he reached down further than I can reach up, and he knew me, and he ransomed me, and he brought me up out of that miry clay, and he saved me, and thank God that he saved me by the blood of Jesus Christ. 
Boy, we look at this and that captivity or punishment that we have. I don't have to go to hell. Glory to God. I don't have to worry about my sins. Why? Because Jesus Christ has paid the ransom for me. That is just who Jesus Christ is, that he made the way for us to be free from captivity of sin. When you begin to look at Psalm chapter number 68, verse number 18, the Bible says that thou hast ascended on, on, on high. That means that he had to descend. He had to come down. He was there in the lofty portals of heaven, there enjoying the, the wonderful time there. But thank God he decided to come down for you and for me. He descended, why? Because he had to vanquish the foes of this world. He had to vanquish Satan's power. He had to vanquish the power of death and hell and the grave. And thank God that he did that for each and every one of us. He vanquished that, uh, that, that foe. He was secured the victory. And you continue on. It says, Thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast led captivity. I love that word, Brother Steve. You know what that word really means? Complete victory. <laughs> last night, last night, could I, last night, Amber was playing a volleyball game. And, uh, and, 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 the, and the very last point, they scored the last point, and everybody was cheering. And then about five minutes later, they started, they reset the, everything back, and they said, we got to play the last point again. I said, what is wrong with these people? Now, you want to make a dad mad. Take a point away from their daughter, glory to God. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just as carnal, glory to God. When it comes to my kids, don't mess with them. Took a point away, I was thinking, bless God, I'm fixing to go talk to that man. I don't know what his problem is. That was clearly a point. That was not a problem. It wasn't on the very edge. It wasn't a questionable thing. There wasn't nothing about it. I'm about to get down, and Heather said, you sit down right now. Now, Brother Richard, I don't, I don't know how you are, but when my wife tells me to sit down, I sit down. That's the way I do it. That's how we roll at the Hat Roy household. Glory to God. But what he's talking about in the psalm is what he's talking about complete victory. Not a question about it. That's what Jesus Christ, hey, the day that Jesus Christ died on a cross, the victory was complete. That was glory to God there's nothing else that needed to be done there's nothing else that I had to do but God secured the victory for me and for you and by the way he quoted the same thing Paul did in Ephesians chapter number 4 verse number 8 he began to talk about that began to say that there is a complete victory the ransom is paid for each and every one of us by the redeemer Jesus Christ not only the Redeemer, but i got to hurry the Reconciler as well that, that he reconciled for us. Colossians chapter number 1, verse number 20 says, And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things of the earth or things in heaven. Jesus Christ was able to redeem us, not only by paying the ransom, but re reconciling humanity to God. I could not pay that way. God could not look upon me but the Redeemer. <laughs> the one that has done all things for each and every one of us. He made it away. He made us. <laughs> he took his blood, my sin, mixed it all together, and the sin went away. His blood stayed and made me compatible with God again. Have you ever taken one of them compatibility tests? Don't do it. It'll give you problems, I guarantee. They'll make you start fighting about things that you didn't even think about, Brother Kyle. So I'm going to tell you, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. But yet I was not compatible with God. Why? Because I had that sin, the vileness of my, myself. But, God, but Jesus Christ, God of the flesh, came and made it to where I could be with him again. Not only was it the Redeemer that he's saying, but he's also saying this. Look in verse number, chapter number 18 in the book of John, verse number 4. He's not only the Redeemer, but he is the ruler. Jesus, therefore, knowing that all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek you? 
Well, all of you know that the setting here is simply this, that Jesus Christ is there in the garden and he's been praying and then the, the guards have come along and they're coming up there with uh, the, the traitor, they're coming with Judas Iscariot and they come along and Jesus Christ says, who are you looking for? Who is it that you want to see? But look at this. And they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus saith unto them, I am he. Wow, what powerful words. He's the ruler of this world. And Judas also, which betrayed him at the end of the verse, stood with them. But I can tell you that words have meanings. Words are important. And I think that we should always be very careful with the words that we say. We'll simply we'll say this, that that saying, I can tell you with all of my heart, that I know with all of my heart, that saying that you used to say when you were kids, uh, don't ever say it because it's not true. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Lie! That's a lie. Words hurt. Words dig deep. Words stay there long after the cast has been taken off. Words stay there much longer after uh, the crutches have gone away. Words mean things. But these words that Jesus Christ is saying, he simply says, very simply, I am he. You say, well, Brother Shane, well, what is so powerful about him saying simply that? Well, he's already declaring that he is the same as God, the Alpha, the Omega. He is he, but in power. Look at verse number 6 in John chapter number 18. And as soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell on the ground. Whoa. All he said was, I am he. Okay, I don't really know how a stone from David's sling hit this giant Goliath and he fell forward. It just don't make sense. But I can say this, that the breath of God is a powerful thing. Hallelujah. The breath of God, I believe, is one of those things that as he began to take the children of Israel and, and part the Red Sea, I believe that he was just breathing. As a matter of fact, the breath of God, it simply says this, that he took the clay of the ground and he breathed the breath of life in the man and he became the man became a living soul. The breath of God is a very important thing. So, Brother Matt, I believe with all of my heart that when Jesus Christ simply said three words, I am he... Boy, such power went forth that those guards, those people, fell back. And, and, and you just imagine this. They get up. Whew. What was that? And then he asked them again. Who, who are you seeking? What's your problem? Why did you fall down? <laughs> well, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. Now, I, and I don't imagine it this way, and, and I, I probably shouldn't do these things, that, but... But I have a wild imagination. I don't know if y'all could tell that or not. I have a wild imagination. I'm just imagining, Brother Kyle, that he probably they said, uh, we're looking for Jesus of, Jesus of Nazareth, preparing themselves. He simply says, I'm he. Such power. You say, well, what kind of power? The same kind of power that when God said, let there be light, guess what happened? There was light. When God said that these things need to take place, guess what took place? All of these things, the power of God, the mighty power of God. Matthew chapter number 28, Jesus simply says that I'm the ruler of all things. I have the power to be able to do these things. And he says all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth in that great commission. And he says in his proclamation that even the attacks of Satan are going to come back. But thank God through his word, through the powerful word of God, through this word that we have, we can bind demons we can set them back and say you have no power over us why because God Almighty is on our side he's the ruler and has power to do all things not only is it the ruler though but number three number three and I'm quickly he simply said this I am he the risen those guards took him they crucified him we all know that story 
We know the account of Jesus Christ. We're here because we believe and trust Jesus Christ as our Savior to be able to see and know that He is a living Redeemer. But thank God He got up on the third day victorious over death, hell, and the grave. He is the reason, risen. In Revelation chapter number 1, verse number 17, the Bible says this, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. I won't be honest with you, Brother Jim, I think that's what we're all going to do. When we see, I, I, I would love to be able to say that I'd shout her out. I'd love to be able to say that I'd just run a lap around the throne. But I believe with all of my heart when we really truly see the almighty God of this universe and the Savior that paid for our sin debt, I believe that we're fall right on our face. He said he fell on his face as dead and laid his right hand upon me saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last. And look at verse number 18. He says, I am he. He that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive evermore, amen, and have the keys to hell and to death. I serve a risen Savior that is victorious. See, the more you study Jesus, the better it gets the more exciting that it gets. At least to me, the more exciting it gets. See, we know that He's the Creator. We know He's the Ruler. We know He's our Redeemer. The great news is that He's not dead. Hallelujah. He is alive and well. You say, well, Brother Shane, what is He doing right now? Well, I'm glad you asked. In about two minutes, I'm going to tell you a couple things. Number one, he's my intercessor. <laughs> Glory to God. He's the one that is praying for me. According to the book of Luke, Paul, or, uh, he told, he, he told uh, uh, Peter that I have prayed for you. That's wonderful to think that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, but do you know that he is praying for us right now? Making intercession for us. Hebrews chapter number 7 to verse number 24, but this man... I thank God for that phrase. Because he continueth hither, hath an unchangeable priesthood, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost, and come that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Jesus Christ is praying for you. <laughs> Elementary, but it blesses my soul. To know that the God of this universe cares for me. The God of this universe came and died and paid a sin debt that I could be forever with Him. He's the same God that hung on the cross and gave up the Spirit but took it up again and now and He lives forevermore. But then I began to look through the book of Hebrews and I found a verse, verse number 1 or verse number 3 in the first chapter. And it says this, Who being the brightness of His glory... The express image of his person, upholding all things by his word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sin, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Now that verse ought to make us shout. Because that means that when God uh, was able to see that Jesus Christ walks into the Holy of Holies there in heaven that sets up and he pours his blood out and God says, I'm satisfied, I'm satisfied. And then Jesus simply walks over to the right hand side, the plain power, the power of God there in that right hand. He sits down and you say, well, what's he going to do? He's making intercession for us. And I begin to look at that word, uh, the express image. Well, what is so important about express image? It means that it's an exact copy. Have you ever signed those invoices that have about three layers? If you use a felt-tip pen, your signature don't go all the way through. But if you use one of them ballpoint pens, everything goes through. Everything's done digitally now. But I remember the days, back in the day, where you had to sign the invoice or sign the slip and they'd have about 14 different pages for you to go through, be able to find your signature. But this is simply saying that it is a carbon copy of God Himself. He is God. And see, God didn't need our help to purge us from our sins. God didn't need our help. He just sat down when it was finished 
See, he's risen, he's victorious, he's the one that is our God. He is the ruler, he's the redeemer, he is the reason, uh, the risen. He is the great I am. See, so many questions, they question the existence of God. Brother Steve, right now, the existence of God has been questioned more in these times, I feel like, than ever before. They hadn't been where I've been. You say, what makes you so... Where have you been that everybody else or somebody else hadn't been? The only place that I know of that everybody in the whole world needs to go to is a little hill called Calvary. Kneel down at the foot of the cross where it is even for everybody. Every sinner can come before God and ask for forgiveness of their sin. You say, is it really, truly that simple? Absolutely. But see, the God that I serve that was the God that I can simply praise. See, God in the flesh is Jesus Christ. I honestly feel like the debate, the debate is over. He is the great I Am. He is the Lord God Almighty. He is the one that can say, I am He. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this evening. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house one more time. God, I beg you, God, that you'd have your will and your way. God, continue on in this service. God, I pray that you'd bless Brother John and his entire family, God, as they're continuing to travel. Lord, I pray that you would bless them, God. I pray that you'd use them for your honor and glory, that many souls would be saved according to their work and how they are trying to continue on for you. But God, we thank you because of grace that each one soul is saved. It's because of your grace and your mercy and your blood. Lord, we beg you, God, that you just touch tonight. God, I pray that you'd put back to, within us, put back within us a joy an exhilaration to be able to look at the scriptures, to be able to say, thank God that I know him. Lord, it's in Christ's name that we pray all these things. Amen.